In this question, we're told we have an aluminium cup which has a volume of 100 cubic centimetres and it's completely filled with glycerin at 22 degrees Celsius. We're asked how much glycerin will spill out of the cup should the temperature of both the cup and the liquid is increased to 28 degrees Celsius. And we're given some information about the volumetric coefficient of expansion for glycerin being 5.4 by 10 to the minus 4 uh, per degree Celsius. So this is a question where we've got uh, a vessel Okay, or a cup, let me draw it as a cylindrical cup. In that case, that's made of aluminium. And inside that, we have the equivalent volume of glycerin. So we know that as when you change the temperature of an object, the, the object's going to expand. Uh, to, let's look at the case of the glycerin, first of all. Uh, the change in the volume of that glycerin is going to be uh, proportional to its original volume, proportional to the coefficient of volumetric expansion beta, and it's also proportional to the change in temperature. So if I don't change the temperature, if delta T is zero, then my volume doesn't change. Okay, I end up the same volume, that makes sense. So in this particular case, uh, the glycerin here, <coughs> when we change its temperature, uh, it's constrained to be inside the cup, uh, and if the aluminium cup doesn't expand, then that glycerin will basically expand upwards, and so there would be a little bit of extra here and that extra will spill out on top. So, so we can find out uh, what that uh, change in the volume of the glycerin is. So we start off with uh, 100 cubic centimetres times 5.1 by 10 to the minus 4, and multiply by my change in temperature, that's T final to minus T initial, so 28 minus 22, which is 6. And it's 0 0.306 uh, centimetres cubed is how much the volume of the glycerin is changed by. So if my aluminium cup didn't expand at all, it didn't change its volume, then this is how much uh, fluid uh, would be spilt out of the cup. However, we do know that aluminium uh, expands. We know that the coefficient of expansion, or the coefficient of linear expansion uh, for aluminium is uh, 23 by 10 to the minus uh, 6. How do I work out the change in volume uh, for this uh, aluminium uh, cup here? So what I want to think about is the, rather than considering straight away the volume of that aluminium cylinder, what I'm going to do is take that uh, aluminium cylinder and make a cut along the side, and then I'm going to unfurl it out. Okay, so I roll it out flat, and we can say that this is the height of uh, the cylinder, and this side length here I'm going to call the circumference of the cylinder. Okay. And so if I want to think about the volume of this original cylinder here, uh, well that volume uh, we know is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height. And I can relate that to the circumference by remembering the circumference is equal to uh, pi times the diameter or 2 times the radius. <coughs> so making the radius the subject here, the radius is equal to the circumference divided by 2 pi. Uh, we find the volume is equal to 1 over 4 pi times the circumference squared multiplied by the height. Now why have I done this? Well, when we heat up the aluminium, because this is the, my coefficient of linear expansion, we know that the circumference will change. Okay, the, the aluminium plate is going to expand a little bit in this direction. Okay. And we also know that the height will change as well, so the material will also expand in the vertical direction. A new volume, call that V prime, is going to be equal to 1 on 4 pi multiplied by my new circumference, and that's actually going to be the circumference plus the change in the circumference, multipl oh, squared, multiplied by my height plus the change in height. And so the way I get this change in circumference and change in height is remembering that at any change in the length of, of my material is given by the original length multiplied by the coefficient of linear expansion times the change in temperature. And so all I want to consider here is those uh, change in lengths. The circumference is one length and the height is another length. So let's write this out. 1 over 4 pi multiplied by now c plus delta c I'm going to put, I want to write these down in terms of my coefficient of linear expansion. So uh, that becomes my circumference plus 
my original circumference times alpha times my change in temperature all squared and now my height plus my delta h which is really my, ch my original height times alpha times delta t and we're almost there uh, what you can see here is that's 1 over 4 pi c is a common factor here so I can take c squared outside and that leaves me with 1 plus alpha times delta t all squared and this term here h is also a common factor so I can take h outside and I've got another term of 1 plus alpha delta t so in fact this becomes 1 plus alpha delta t all cubed <coughs> now if I can compare what I've got down here to my new volume when I heat my uh, aluminium uh, hopefully you can see that my new volume is equal to my original volume multiplied by 1 plus alpha delta t to the power 3. What I want to look at now is the change in volume. So give myself a little bit more room here. If I write my new volume as my original volume plus my change in volume multiplied out by this uh, this expanded out. So I end up with 1 plus 3 times alpha delta t plus 3 times alpha delta t all squared plus alpha delta t all cubed. And if you're wondering how I'm able to do that uh, in my head, what I want to remind you of is Pascal's triangle. So 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. So if I have something like um, A plus B, uh, I've got A plus B here, A plus B squared, it's A squared plus 2AB plus B squared, A plus B all cubed is uh, going to be A cubed plus 3A squared B plus 3AB squared plus B cubed. So, so once I've got this form here, I just want to um, remind you that the alpha times delta t is a very small number. It's 10 to the minus 6, uh, so it's very, very small compared to 1. So in fact, uh, alpha delta t is so small that alpha delta t squared is even much, much smaller, and alpha delta t cubed is even tinier. So in fact, we're going to set these ones to be essentially 0. Okay. Uh, and that leaves us with the expression of V plus delta V is equal to V plus 3 alpha uh, V times delta T. And now if I look at this carefully, uh, I've got a V on both sides, so those things cancel, and I end up with my change in volume is equal to, uh, is proportional to my volume times 3 alpha multiplied by delta t. If I look at the top and compare that to my expression for my change in volume when I've got a volumetric uh, coefficient expansion there, we can see straight away that uh, my volumetric coefficient expansion is just simply related to my linear coefficient of expansion by the factor of 3. So if I work at the change in the volume of the aluminium, uh, that tells me that uh, 100 centimetres cubed times 3 times my 23 by 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by my change in temperature, which was 6, and that gives me 0 0.0414 centimetres cubed. That's how much the volume of the aluminium expands by. Therefore, the volume of fluid which is uh, lost is going to be equal to the volume of the glycerin, 0 0.306 minus the volume of the aluminium container expands by, and that uh, gives me uh, 0 0.26.